People ignore the fact that the breeders are taking gambles. You have to take care of your breeders. That's the backbone of this industry. I need to provide for the breeder the best investment program I can. I share the upside of how a lot of people tell me they're glad they did it. You have people here, they have a farm and they need to sell their foals and they need to have a chance of making money. I'm proud of what's happened here. I think that we're just in the beginning stages. I'm excited really about the future. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Spa Babies, presented by Spendthrift, the Breeders Farm. I'm Dan Ullman, along with Nicole Russo, and Friday's Spa Baby race is race number three. We're going five and a half furlongs on the turf. Let's take a look at this field of New York bred maiden special weight for juvenile fillies. Spendthrift is represented by the number eight Good Credence. This filly is by their sire, Jimmy Creed. Nice race going five and a half furlongs for race number three. Couple of experienced horses in this race. Couple of interesting first time starters as well, Nicole. And we always talk about how experience matters in this in these kind of races, but in this race, I'm kind of leaning towards the firsters. You know, I think so as well, uh, especially a couple of the horses with, with the experience. I wasn't, uh, you know, I, I'm not quite sure how they'll move forward from some of those experiences based on what I saw in the races. And I do think there are some interesting first time starters in here. These turf sprints for juveniles, especially always wide open. Well, we'll take a look at the field in program number order because we have a coupled entry in this field. We'll begin with the number one, Tokyo Bay. This is a daughter of first crop stallion Japan, and we remember Japan. He was this big, hulking brute of a horse. Unfortunately, he had some injuries. When I think progeny of Japan, I don't think five and a half furlongs on the turf. I think they want distance. I think they'll definitely want distance. Uh, I think the Japans could run on the turf. Japan is by Medaglia Doro, who's a multi-purpose sire. Of course, that El Prado sire line gives us stallions like Kittens Joy. I think Japan might turn out to be a hidden turf sire, but I do expect them to be later developing types. Of course, he came on in his three-year-old year. I expect them to want to run long. And there's a lot of route ability in the female family for Tokyo Bay as well. Absolutely. This horse also listed as a vet scratch on July the 17th has come back with one slow three furlong breeze. I want to take a wait and see approach for Tokyo Bay. But as you say, there's a lot of route ability, a lot of turf ability later on. Maybe she'll just need a race. The number one A is Wall Eye. This is a daughter of Quality Road who's just rock solid. 14% winners with juvenile first time starters, 11% winners with first time turfers. Nice family as well. The damn one on dirt and synthetic. She has fold one turf winner, one debut winner, and the second dam could run a little bit. Scoop was a grade three dirt route winner. Is this another situation, however, where you feel more distance will make this filly more effective down the road? You know, perhaps, although I'm not ruling her out, uh, Quality Road, a good multi-purpose sire who can pass his brilliance on to his offspring. Of course, think of City of Light, who was so good at a mile. He can sire good turf horses, including good turf sprinters like Hootenanny. Uh, what I'm more concerned about for Walleye is that uh, Gary Contessa's barn turns out good two-year-olds, but likes to give them a start to get their feet wet first. Perfect segue for our formulator fact concerning Contessa and Walleye. Past five years, juvenile debut runners in maiden special weight turf sprints, zero for 30. We'll move down towards the rail for the number two, I'm Incommunicado by McLean's Music. And McLean's Music, obviously the sire of a classic winner uh, in cloud computing, the Preakness winner. Don't really think turf when I think uh, McLean's Music. 7% winners with first turf sires. The dam has fold a turf winner, however. But I don't know. This filly to me is an interesting speed over stamina pedigree. Another one that I want to watch first out. Yeah, you know, I think this one's a little bit interesting. As I said, the pedigree, uh, you know, the pedigree really leans more dirt with McLean's music over old Trieste from the AP and D line. But I do think there's quite a bit of speed here. Old Trieste was so, so fast, you know, when he was called upon. McLean's music, a classic sire, but when his only start sprinting, Derek Ryan sometimes sends out a horse who can run a little bit. I think Incommunicado, excuse me, will show a bit of speed from the inside, but might need a surface switch down, down the line. Of the experienced horses in the race, I respect the three light in the sky most because Linda Rice is one of the most dangerous second time out trainers 
in the entire country. And she debuted this horse. She wanted to run this one on the dirt. It was washed off. She ran her on a muddy track and just was run off her feet by a runaway winner that day. Second time out for Rice has been a big angle. And as we see in this pedigree, Light in the Sky has some. She's a half to Iron Power, who was stakes placed on the turf. Iron Miz, who was a stakes winning dirt sprinter. And the Dam was a stakes winning turf sprinter. So I really feel sh if this filly fits the conditions of this race very nicely. I think so as well. As we said, there was definite turf intent first time out. Uh, she had a bit of a troubled trip. Never really had a chance, I think, after getting squeezed at the break. And then you mentioned just outrun. Uh, kind of light uh, from the buyer perspective. But, you know, as far as this field goes, she matches up. Tale of the Cat is a multi-purpose sire who certainly imparts speed. I like that crossed over a more than ready mare. More than ready, obviously, a terrific turf sire, a terrific juvenile sire. Uh, respect to Linda Rice with turf sprinters, and I think it's a good sign that Jose Ortiz stays aboard. Not only is Rice great with second out maidens, here's a formulator fact with two year olds moving from dirt to turf, four for her last nine, a $4.16 return on investment. The four is Stye Town Baby. This is a filly going out for the quality Mark Cassie barn uh, by Bellamy Road. And I actually like this nice long string of workouts for Stye Town Baby. I just wish there was more turf in the pedigree because everything else I like about her. Yeah, I, I, you know, I thought she was very interesting. Uh, Mark Cassie doesn't get a lot of New York brats. Tyler Gaffleon, who of course is partnered with the Cassie Barn frequently the last couple of years, is having an outstanding meet at Saratoga. I think just based on those connections, Stytown Baby will take some action. I like the nice long string of works. Uh, I do wish perhaps that she had a couple more works at Saratoga, and I wish she had a little more turf in the pedigree, but I wouldn't be surprised if this horse is, re is ready to fire with that nice foundation under her. I agree, because while it's not a really strong turf pedigree, there's some sprint ability on the bottom of this pedigree. Perhaps Stye Town Baby is quick out of the gate. We know the five Apollos Abraxas is quick out of the gate. She's already run four times, and she's shown speed in her last two races. I would expect her to be on or near the lead again. She only uh, sold for $1,000 as a yearling, but there is some turf and sprint ability on the bottom. I just wonder if she's already been exposed after four starts, although this will be her turf debut against state breads. Yeah, that's true. She is dropping down from open maiden special company, including a couple of races where she faced the boys into state bred fillies uh, of her four starts. Two of those were taken off the turf. The two races where she got to run on the turf were her best outings. Uh, that being said, I think, you know, I'd prefer the first time starters or the horses with only one star in this spot, just because I think, as you said, she has exposed herself a little bit. A filly with some price potential may be the number six, Canarsie Angel, by Kentucky Derby and Preakness winner Big Brown, who, of course, won his debut at two on turf at Saratoga. This is a half-sister to Creasy, who is a stakes-winning turf sprinter. The dam won over $100,000 and won on turf and has been rather productive as a broodmare. These are under-the-radar connections. Canarsie Angel might be the kind of filly that handicappers could use underneath at a big price. Yeah, and you know, this, uh, the, her, her dam, you know, in addition to throwing Creasy, such a solid race mare, earned six figures, uh, one on turf herself, three for three as a brood mare. Big Brown, as you mentioned, he's developed into a really solid turf sire in this regional market. Not only was he a two-year-old debut winner on the turf, he was a stakes winner on the turf later on in his three-year-old campaign, so he, he's classy. A horse that's going to attract a lot of attention at the windows is the number seven, Cake. This is a Chad Brown-trained daughter of Majestic Perfection who sold for $100,000 as a yearling. And I really like this combination, the speed of Majestic Perfection over the stamina and class on the bottom of this pedigree. This is the family of Wilcoxin and Ketawayo and Dynaforce. Classy, long-winded turf horses, but you got to think the majestic perfection part of it is going to add the necessary speed to the mix. 
Yeah, I think so as well. And Majestic Perfection, who's now standing overseas, certainly has some international appeal, some turf type appear appeal. He adds speed, as you mentioned, to really what I think is a route-oriented bottom side of this pedigree. As soon as I saw Ketawayo and Dynaforce in there, I really wanted to see this one going longer. I think in this case, you'll really want to look at the clocker reports produced by our team, led by colleague Mike Welsh. Uh, really see what Chad's been doing with this horse in the mornings, and if she looks like she's sharp, if she's ready to fire early on. The number eight is Good Credence by Spendthrift Stallion Jimmy Creed. Good Credence has started once. That was at Monmouth, and she just didn't run very well. She's getting the Lasix and Blinkers makeover for Anthony Margata while switching surfaces. This filly was good enough to sell for $110,000 in May. There is a lot of speed on the bottom of this pedigree. The dam's a half to Pomeroy's Pistol, who was a good dirt sprinter. Uh, again, I wish there was a little bit more turf in this family, but the Jimmy Creeds can win on turf. I think this filly will improve second time out. Yeah, Jimmy Creed, a young stallion, was a pretty versatile runner himself. Uh, but I thought it was very interesting that this one is moving dirt to turf. I think it's more of a dirt-oriented pedigree. But I do think it's an interesting sign that she's picking up Johnny Velasquez for her Saratoga debut here. The nine is my sassy Sarah, and you want to talk about turf pedigree. This filly has it in spades. She's from the first crop of summer front, a quality turf runner in his own right. The dam won routing on turf. She's foaled a couple of turf winners. And the dam's a half-sister to Jay Ray, who was just a nice turf mare for Todd Pletcher back in the day. Tough outside post position for my sassy Sarah. I'd like to see her at middle distances down the road, but it's a really strong grass pedigree. Very much so. And you know what? I think Summer Front uh, might be able to throw some precocious two-year-olds. He's by Warfront, who, of course, is a leading two-year-old sire worldwide. That Danzig line really injects some precocity into them. Certainly, I think Summer Front is going to give you turf horses. There's turf underneath on the bottom side. But yeah, crossing Summer Front over a street crime air. I do think this one might want a bit more distance. Uh, you know, maybe this one's going to come running a bit, fill out some of your exotics and be one to watch for down the line. Friday's Spa Babies race presented by Spendthrift Farm is race number three, fairly wide open. We won't be able to watch the board. I'm assuming Chad's horse is going to take a lot of money. I assume Linda Rice's horse is going to take her share of money. Who do you like in here? You know, I'm going to lean toward Linda Rice's horse, light in the sky, down toward the inside there. Um, I love that. I love that pedigree. Uh, I love... Uh, you know, going dirt to turf. Certainly Linda Rice can handle this type of horse. I think Cake is going to go off your favorite. Uh, I think Chad Brown, Javier Castellano, you know this one will be well bet. But I would like to see Cake going a bit farther down the line. So I'm going to try to beat her with Light in the Sky, who might offer some value by comparison. And underneath, I'll use Carnassi Angel and My Sassy Sarah. I want to use three horses in my multiple race wagers. While I do respect light in the sky, I want to use a little bit of the four Stye Town Baby. I wish there was more turf in the pedigree, but there is speed here, and Mark Cassie can win first time out. I don't want to let Chad knock me out of any multiple race wagers, so I have to use the number seven cake. And the eight good credence, as we talked about, might improve second time out. You made a very good point about that rider switch to John Velasquez. So she's getting a little bit of everything. The switch to Johnny B, the switch to Turf, Lasix, Blinkers. She has experience, and best of all, she'll be a little bit of a price. So I'll use the four, seven, and eight in race number three at Saratoga. It's Friday's Spa Baby Race. It's presented by Spendthrift, the Breeders' Farm.